Experiential education better prepares individuals to be lifelong learners and anticipates the needs of our future workforce. Experiential education comes in many forms, such as internships, co-ops, apprenticeships, uh, workplace learning environments, study abroad. You can develop all kinds of experiential educational opportunities in everyday life. And it is not until we truly take in information that we can develop that true wisdom. Kolb's theory of experiential education identifies the cycle and the process in which we go through in a very practical sense. It is taking in information, maybe in a classroom environment, reading a textbook, reading a new book and sharing it with your friends. But it's really taking in that information and putting it into our workplace environment or into a community organization that helps us reflect upon the, our experiences and how we can continue to improve and be better for the future. One example is marriage. You can read all the books you want on marriage, but it is not until you truly have a relationship and a partner that you can understand why that relationship is so critical and how you can be even better in that role. Experiential education even comes at the young age where your mother tells you, don't touch the stove, it's hot. But yet they reach out and touch the stove anyways. Ah, right? And it's through a form of experience. And they realize, I probably shouldn't do that again. It is no longer enough for students to be able to graduate from college with a degree and think that's going to give them a competitive edge for the future. We have to provide more opportunities for both employees in our workplace and students to develop an opportunity for them to grow and learn. In the 1980s, maybe that was enough. But today, that's not what employers are looking for. I can think of a student that I worked with really closely over the last few years. He was getting a degree in criminal justice, was taking classes in English and writing. He didn't understand why he was taking those classes. He really struggled as a student. And then as a senior, he had an internship with a law enforcement agency in our local community, and all of a sudden, the light bulb turned on for him. He grew in maturity and a sense of confidence and now he truly understood why writing that report for his supervisor was so critical and how that class that he took at a liberal arts institution was so applicable. It was a form of experiential education. There is no way that a CEO from the 1980s could have even anticipated the workforce needs of today. Things are moving at such a rapid pace. And if we don't keep up with these times and ever-changing environment, we will lose an opportunity for individuals and companies to grow and change. Experiential education applies to all individuals, all industries, and all organizations and community groups. There is so much pressure for individuals to go on to college and choose the right major. I'm sure some of you can relate to that. Pick a major that's going to be applying to a specific company or a degree. That's not what companies are looking for. Have you ever heard of someone getting promoted because they had a certain degree? I don't think so. We also understand that we're teaching a di very different type of learner today than we ever have before. Learners who want applicability. Learners who are looking for what, how is this going to help me improve in my next job and my next involvement in a community group. Janet Reno, former Attorney General, had a degree in chemistry. John F. Kennedy, former president, had a degree in international business. It wasn't because of their degree that made them a great leader. It was because they were constantly learning and bettering themselves every day. Individuals who have an experiential education opportunity are twice as likely to be engaged in the workplace. So not only does it help the individual have a more valuable experience at work to feel appreciated and valued, but it also helps the company. That individual is less likely to leave. But keep in mind, most people have anywhere from five to eight different careers in their lifetime. So we have to continue to evolve and anticipate other changes happening in our future. Experiential education also helps individuals develop their soft skills, transferable skills. The National Association of Colleges and Employers identifies 10 skills that employers are ultimately looking for. Things such as ability to communicate, both in writing and public speaking, the ability to uh, problem solve, evaluate information, analyze data, Ability to demonstrate initiative. Having a global and multicultural understanding of our workplaces. Again, it is not because of a specific degree. It's because of those transferable skills that make you competitive. The most valuable player on an athletic team is the utility player. 
Imagine a player goes down, they're hurt. You have to send in someone to play that position to hopefully make a play to help win the game. That's no different than companies. Companies value the utility player. Someone can, who can evolve with the needs of the organization as your vision and mission changes of the company and you develop new products, new, new um, services. It is somebody who can then jump into any role because they have the transferable skills to be successful. And it's having the versatility to apply to any environment at any given time. We are an ever-changing workforce, and we have to maintain our competitive edge in this global society if we're going to compete. If we don't do that and provide more opportunities for individuals to grow and learn, we're losing out. Experiential education is both an intensive and intentional opportunity. It is reflective. It does require a few things. The first one being a mentor. Someone you can regularly communicate with and dialogue about something you're learning and, un and understanding in a book or in a classroom environment, but someone who's going to walk you through that process. Someone who is motivated to see you succeed. It also requires ongoing feedback from both your peers, supervisors, competitors, someone who's going to challenge you and help you identify your strengths and weaknesses so you can continue to grow. And it's having ongoing reflection and being motivated for change. It also requires goal setting, anticipating the future. Where do you want yourself to be in a few years? What do you need to accomplish today to make that happen? And it's all because of experiential education. Experiential education provides a much greater value in our workplace. It will help us be competitive in today's economy. If we don't prepare for change and we don't prepare for tomorrow, we're going to continue to lose out. So we must put a value and investment into our employees, into our community members, to really help them grow and learn so that they can, too can change. Individuals who are in a manufacturing environment who maybe do the same job day in and day out have a very different understanding of the process versus an individual that maybe sits in the office setting. Providing that individual with an experiential education so that they can improve that process and take feedback to their supervisor is going to give us more opportunity for that business to develop efficiencies and be better. We can do that in so many industries, in so many companies, if we just put value back into our employees and our students and helping all of us be better. Experiential education better prepares individuals to be lifelong learners and anticipates the needs of our future workforce. Thank you.